welcomes, please click like and share. You are in for a treat. It's going down. It's going down. Let me tell you, it went down them last two episodes. Now, this is part three of the family war on of the entertainment's war on family values in our community. Our values are, you know, um, at risk, like, and it's just being stepped over, looked upon, and then, and everybody, we, you know, it's so tricky, like the things that's posted in media. And I think uh, Brother Rashid has shown us that and have proven that to us. Now, get ready, because let me tell you, he always opened up with this thing. And he played this little game of mind teas and brain teas and stuff. And I'm telling you, he done had Doc B on the edge of her chair the last two times. And this is the third episode. We got one more before he's going to WURD. So please click like and share. And if you're not going to be able to stay with us tonight, don't forget, always you can always go back on YouTube, which is Bring It to the Table with your host, author Doc B. You can go on um, the three C's on Facebook and you can view it as well. You can go on the Malati Islami and you can um, also view it on there because this is an Islamic um presentation. Um, I'm allowed to do that, but there is a disclaimer that Malati Islami has no opinion and nothing to do with what Brother Rashi is presenting today. I, I'm just able to, as an administrator, go on that platform um, because I'm linked to them. So uh, I am able to go on there. So don't get this twisted. This has nothing to do with Malati Islami. And you can also find it on my WURD uh, page on Facebook, as well as my regular Twitter. And uh, I said YouTube, you can find me on LinkedIn. Guess what? We're on Spotify. We're on Spotify. Today's episode, you can listen to right now on Spotify. Yep, your girl done advanced. Everything evolves. Okay? So I'm going to be quiet because I know he's got a lot to cover. But I'm so excited. I know he's going to bring up that brain teaser first. Go ahead. All Go right. Ahead. Everybody licks him up to Brother Rashi. Here we go. All right. So uh, with the, the slide display on the screen? Um, I can put it up. Yes, I can. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's start off first with the Fatiha. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahir rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahmanir rahim. Maliki yawm al-deen. All right, and for those people that are not familiar with the Fatiha, it's the English in English. It is in the name of Allah, or God, most gracious, most merciful. Praise be to Allah, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds, most gracious, most merciful, master of the day of judgment. Thee do we worship, thine aid we seek. Show us the straight way, the way of those on whom thou hast bestowed thy grace, those whose portion is not wrath and who go not astray. All right, so here we go. This is uh, my contact information. So if you need to get in contact with me or um, if you would like me to do a presentation for you, you can um, just contact me at that information. And there's uh, also my YouTube channel. And uh, you may want to check out my YouTube channel channel before they <laughs> take it down because they've been oh, yeah, it's up there it's yeah, up they, there yeah they've been uh attacking my channel um recently so i mean well they should i mean you got some very valuable information and um your research is just impeccable like alhamdulillah i appreciate that but yeah they're trying they're, they're trying to <laughs> they're trying to get me get me off the platform so we'll see all right but here Here's your brain teaser, and I'm only going to do one to really get the information. So here's your brain teaser. Okay. How can you make the number seven even without addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? Seven oh. Without addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. How do you make the number seven even? Seven? That's an odd number, brother. Yeah. But how do we make it even without addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? Cut it in half. 
<laughs> it's funny. It's funny, uh, sister. But my seventh grade teacher, <laughs> he told me to tell you that he got the last one. Oh, he did. <laughs> yeah. He told me he got that last one. So. Oh, that last one was hilarious. I had a ball with that one. <laughs> All right. So we have. I don't know the answer. A minute and 18 seconds. Is there anybody that can help Doc B out with this one? Oh, come on, folks. Where's my Canadian people at? You guys are funny. You guys know you're smart. Come on. Where are you? <laughs> Man. Uh oh. Look like Brother Vince is in. Yeah, Brother Vince is in. Come on. Come on, Brother Vince. Come on. Let's he help. knows that answer. <laughs> we got 50 seconds. Oh. Uh oh. Doc, we put a head down. I accidentally flashed the solution up there. I didn't see it. <laughs> All right. We are down to 32 seconds. 32 seconds. Oh, gosh. <sighs> I can't get it. Uh oh. How do you make the number seven even without addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? Uh, and don't be cheating and googling stuff either. Yeah, yeah people be trying to cheat. Yeah, they do. <laughs> All right, time is up. The oh. correct answer, the solution is drop the S. So if I take the letter S oh, off of I'm, seven, I'm, have the word even. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm over. <laughs> I'm over it. Drop the S. Here we go. All right. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of slide. Uh, yeah, brother Vince said. Vince said, just tilt it to the left. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm All gonna. Right, kinda, right. I'm gonna kind of step away, just a, a little tad bit from what we um, what we've been doing the last couple of sessions because I want you to see how the media operates. All right. So here, this is the uh, uh, every time they talk about the monkeypox, uh -huh. they show an image like this on the television, don't they? Yeah, they do. No matter where the outbreak is, they always show black, these black images, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But now, so let's discuss it a little bit because, like I said, the media is about programming, controlling your perception of reality. That's okay. right. So here we go. Now watch this. Now they have stock photos that look like this, Sean, portraying other races with multiple. Mm. But yet they always put a black face on it. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. These are other other races. All right. But it's always black. So now what they they've been getting criticized about it. So they've started kind of trying to mix it a little bit. All right. But mm -hmm. this is what on early on and it, and it still goes on all right but now uh -huh. i want you to see this this is what the uh, cdc says about um monkeypox all right so it says monkeypox is a rare disease caused by infection with the monkeypox virus monkeypox virus is part of the same family of viruses as variola uh virus the virus that causes uh, smallpox Monkeypox symptoms are similar to smallpox symptoms, but milder, and monkeypox is rarely fatal. All right? Mm -hmm. It says monkeypox was discovered in 1958 when two outbreaks of a pox-like disease occurred in the colonies, colonies of monkeys kept for research. Mm -hmm. All right? So where, where was it discovered at? Right. All right? Where, where are they telling you it was discovered at? Right. <laughs> Right, what, but I mean, what, what, uh, where, what place did they say it came from? They're telling you mo monkeypox originated where? In Africa. Africa. Right. So how come? And you African, look Western African countries. But now watch, monkeypox. This is from Wikipedia. It says monkeypox was first identified as a distinct illness. In 1950, oh, that lab again. Mm. Um, laboratory monkeys in Copenhagen, 
Denmark. Denmark. So it was originally founded in lab monkeys in Denmark. Okay. And then later it appears in Africa. How? All right. Okay. Great question. Great question. All right. But now we got to think about it because let's look at what are lab, what are lab monkeys? All right. Because this is what they found. They found it in lab monkeys. A lab monkey is a non-human primate used in scientific or medical research. Every year in the U.S., more than 109,000 primates are imprisoned in laboratories where most of them are abused and killed in invasive, painful, and terrifying experiments. Well, they were experimenting on these monkeys in Denmark, not Africa. Right. And they took this illness and put it in Africa as a part of this program called NSSM 200 or the Kissinger Report, mm. 1974, all right? And as you can see, monkeypox uh, first started in 1970. So look at the dates. So NSS, NSSM is a, uh, is, is, they also call it, like I said, the, the Kissinger Report. And this uh -huh. started I've in heard of that report. I've heard of that report. Right. So uh, in NSSM 200, uh, they saw overpopulation as a threat to U.S. national security, especially overpopulation in Africa. Mm -hmm. SSM 200 was written by the U.S. National Security Council. It was a classified document written in 1974. It was only declassified in 1989, 15 years later. NSSM 200 tied food and foreign aid to population control. Africa was perceived as a threat because its population was young and vigorous with lots of uh, natural resources. The U.S. saw these factors as a threat to its world domination in the future, so they enacted this program, NSSM 200. And what it contains in it, the, the way that they would uh, lower population is through abortion, sterilization, disease, war. These were all tactics to accomplish this goal of, of population reduction. So you think about the AIDS in Africa, okay? You think about all these different things that were being done in Africa to reduce their population, okay? I'm but not, now, I'm right, but see, and, and, and just just so that you know that I'm not just you know coming off the top of my head with this, here where they were talking about in Kenya, they were putting sterilization drugs in their tetanus vaccines, mm -hmm. okay? So. A woman would go in thinking that they were getting a, a tetanus shot, you know, to protect them from tetanus, but they had sterilization drugs in it. Okay. Because saying, they were, that's diabolical. Yeah, diabolical. Diabolical. And it was only being given to, to women of childbearing years. It wasn't being given to anybody else but women of childbearing years. Okay. And they got caught doing this. All right. So very interesting. That's why it's so important not to be so entertained by the various amusements that we have. Research, you know, learn about things because, you know, they're, they're pulling the wool over your eyes. And while you're so distracted, all of this stuff is going on. All right. And we talked about this last time. We talked about uh, Alice Bailey's 10 point strategy for a new world order. All right. But now let's look at what Allah says. And it says, and they have been commanded no more than this, to worship Allah or God, offering him sincere devotion, being true in faith, to establish regular prayer and to practice regular charity. And that is the religion, right and straight. This is all that Allah is asking of us. This is all that God is asking of us, you know, to, to you know, live righteously, to be in a state of peace or be in a state of Islam, right? All right, so let me, let me move on because I want to, Go to uh, what we haven't looked at so far. So this is a statement, and I think this is a very interesting statement because it, it you know, it, it really deals with, you know, people addicted to things. Before you heal someone, ask him if he's willing to give up the things that made him sick. Mm. Before you heal someone, ask him if he's willing to give up the things that made him sick. And that's the thing. You know, many of us might not be willing to give up these things that are uh, destroying our families and, and communities. You know? So it's very important 
that we uh, be able to answer that question within ourselves. It's, this wicked system is powered by our vices. Are we willing to give them up? Are we willing to give up the very things that are destroying our families and communities and keeping us from a state of Islam? What is a vice? A vice is an immoral or evil habit or practice. It's immoral conduct, depraved or degrading behavior. It's habitual, okay? So, you know, this system is run by, you know, it's by, uh, it's being, our vices help to power this system, you know? Um, and if, you know, we're willing to give those things up, the gambling, the drinking, the drugs, you know, all of these different things that, you know, uh, contribute to um, the downfall of our communities. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. So in the Quran, uh, uh, Surah 5, verse 90, it says, O ye who believe intoxicants and gambling, dedication of stones, divination by arrows are an abomination of, of shaitan's handiwork. Eschew such abomination that you may prosper. So when it says eschew, what is it telling us? Allah is telling us to abstain or keep away from, to keep away from these things, to shun it, to avoid it. Right? So, you know, these are things that we have to do. Even uh, with Frederick Douglass, this is a quote from his book. He said, when a slave is drunk, the slaveholder has no fear that he will plan an insurrection, no fear that he will escape to the north. It is the sober thinking slave who is dangerous and, and needs the vigilance of his master to keep him a slave. OK, and that's why they give us all these entertainments. That's why they give us all these drugs so that we cannot uh, uh, talk, talk against or you know go against their system that they've created. OK. But let's look at some of the vices of today because, you know, that was looking at some of the vices of the past. But let's look at some of the vices of today. We have drugs, computers, Internet, video games, social media, modern day paganism is what I call it. And when I say modern day paganism, I'm talking about the worship of celebrities. Wait, that's a big one. Yeah, because think about it. I mean, look at how people react to seeing celebrities. Right, oh, right. Passing out. I remember I would show a video of Michael J. Jan- of Michael Jackson in concert. And he's dancing. Some people passing out. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, same thing with Beyonce. But I call it modern day paganism because basically all they've done, all the system has done, is it has created living, breathing idols. Okay, living, breathing idols. That's what they've created. Just like they used to worship idols of, of stone and wood back in the day. Uh-huh. Now they have living, breathing idols that, they, uh, that they've created. So uh, some more of the vices of music, you know, because a lot of this music, if you look at the lyrics, I say don't pay attention to the music, pay attention oh, to the lyrics. Buddy. Ain't no, I say there's no more real music out there. No, not at all. Everything has to have either profanity in it or it's sexualized. Or it's for the black community is is sex uh, the the sex and the violence, yeah, and the drugs and all of that stuff. Okay, That's so more vices that I put on here was television, gambling, pornography, cell phones, and racism. Okay, yeah. these are some of the things that we have to get away from or use it in a different way. Okay, mm-hmm. in terms of when you talk about cell phone and television. These types of things, you know, you have to use it in a positive way, you know. But a lot of a lot of people are using it, you know, negative. All right. So now let's move on. The Prophet Muhammad, according to a hadith, said, "All of you resemble a herdsman, just as her, herdsman protects his herd. So you sh- you too should protect your households. So we, as adults, we are, as parents, you know, in in the household, we have to." Make sure we protect our children from what's going on, you know, to protect the home environment from these things that are going on. All right. Mm-hmm. Here's a nice quote that I think is very interesting. It says, sometimes God will put a Goliath in your life for you to find the David within you. And if you're familiar with the story of David and Goliath, you know, he was up against this 
big Yahoo, you know, mm-hmm. have been able to defeat, but you know, through his uh, belief in God, his belief in Allah, he was able to, to, to defeat him. But sometimes these Goliaths are placed in front of us, like addictions are, you know, Goliaths. Yes. You know? yes. So let me ask you this question, Dabi, so if you can tell me. Vampire lore. Remember the old vampire movies? According to the old vampire lore, how could a vampire get into your home? How could a vampire get into the home? What was the old vampire lore about how a vampire could get into your home? <laughs> you, have, you, have to be you said what? They have to be invited. The, woo! There you go. They have to be invited. Now look at all the vampires that we've invited into our home. Right. They have to be dogs, all of this stuff. Yeah. These are things that we're inviting into our home, but they're sucking the morals and values out of our home. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. We get further away from get, the moral and values. We get away from Allah's guidance. Right. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. So one thing I want to talk about first is digital, what I call digital hero. Oh, now you're going somewhere. Now you are So when you watch out, man, watch out. Right. And then think about it. People are addicted to this technology. Yeah. They are addicted. You should see there, there was a kid on a com- computer at school, and I had to tap him. I had to like almost shake him. Because I'm calling you knew stuff. you were trying to get his attention. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. That's how addictive this stuff is. I right? know. Now it says digital hair and how screens turn kids into psychotic junkies. We now know that iPads, smartphones, and Xboxes are a form of, di- of a digital drug. Yeah. Recent brain imaging, because they did brain imaging on it. Oh, I did. I studied it. I studied it. That they affect. Oh man, I hit the thing. They affect the brain's frontal cortex, which controls executive functioning, including impulse control, in exactly the same way that cocaine does. Mm -hmm. Technology is so hyper arousing that it raises dopamine levels, the feel good neurotransmitter most involved in the addiction dynamic, as much as sex. Okay. Now, this addictive effect is why Dr. Peter Weibro, director of neuroscience at UCLA, calls screens electronic cocaine. Mm-hmm. And Chinese researchers call them digital heroin. Mm. In fact, Dr. Andrew uh, Doan, the head of addiction research for, Pentagon, for the Pentagon and the U.S. Navy, who has been researching video game addiction, calls video games and screen technologies di- digital pharmacia. Or, uh, yeah, pharmacia. All right. But now it was so bad in one of the Asian countries, the guys, they would get up and they would go to these what they call gaming cafes. Mm -hmm. And it was so the addiction was so bad for some of them that they would put on pampers to go to these uh, gaming uh, cafes so that they wouldn't have to get off of the game. They would they would go to the bathroom on on themselves. But that's how strong and powerful an, an addiction it was. Right. So uh, what a lot of people don't know is that Steve Jobs wouldn't, uh, he, was one, he was one of the creators of the technology and his children weren't allowed to use it. It says Steve Jobs didn't make movies or TV shows. Uh, he changed the way people watch them by developing Apple products, including the iPhone and iPad. Despite being one of the integral forces in changing technology, Jobs didn't let his children use his new inventions. One year prior to his death in 2010, Jobs was quoted as saying, we limit how much technology our kids use at home. Explaining his children had never even used an iPod. So here he is making this stuff for for you and your children, but he would not for allow everybody them. else. Yeah, for everybody else. Right? So very interesting things here. So my question is now, what is the logo of the Apple computer? The Apple. It's the Apple, right? But it's the Apple with what? 
With a bite. It's with a bite in it. Ah, now, now you with me, right? It's yeah. a bite taken out of it. The people that designed this stuff were occultists, all right? This goes back to the story of Adam. Ooh. Because the the apple is supposed to represent the tree of knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. And you can go on, you can learn about anything using these computers, right? Mm -hmm. So now I ask you, what was the price of the first Apple computer? The first Apple wow. computer was um, priced at this. 600, oh, not the sixes. Yes, yes. See, these people were occultists. Wow. I'm telling you, and don't take any anything that I say. Don't don't take my word for it. Look it up for yourself. I believe you. All right, but now watch. Here we go. Now, as the kids are in school and they're playing going these little uh, gaming sites and stuff like this, they pop stuff up like this. Yeah, the quiz. But but look at the quiz. Am I gay? And this is this is <laughs> this pops up when a kid is on something like uh, a math site. Okay, so it's these people. <laughs> they are really doing a whole lot of deceptive things to you know get to our children. All right. Look what I did. What you do? <laughs> oh yeah, yep. See. That's See? crazy. It's crazy, but this, is what, crazy. this is what I'm telling you. Look these people, that. these people are heavily into the occult. Okay. Six, six. six. Oh my God. Now this was this was a story, and I'm going to show you how this digital heroin works. You see this guy. His, uh, he his his uh, parents took his video game from him. Uh -huh. Right. And they hit it. So he asked them where was his video game. And they, you know, they said, because he was playing the game 17 hours a day. So they got tired of it. So they hid the game from him. He asked them where it was at. They didn't tell him. He went to go looking for it. He went to go find a video game, but he found his father's gun. He came with the gun as they were sitting in the living room. He said, close your eyes. I have a surprise for you. He had the gun behind his back. Mm -hmm. he, when they closed their eyes, he took out the gun and shot both of them. Killed his mother, mm -hmm. and the the um the father survived. Mm -hmm. And then the father was asking the judge for leniency for him. But this is how bad these addictions are, wow. and the stuff that these people are consuming. Wow! All right, and we went through talking about. Another name for a television show being a television program because they're programming us what to think, what to believe, and how to view even ourselves, really. Okay? Mm -hmm. And what's happening is, is that all of the satanic, you know, programming, what they're doing is they're normalizing these behaviors through the television program. All right? Now, here's an anonymous quote that says, children are great imitators, so give them something great to imitate. Right? Right. And, you know, there's another quote that I find very interesting. It says, the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. So they, yeah. know, they know that our children are the key because they are the next generation. So that's why they're putting so much into influencing our children. All right? The dangers of television programming. Sin is being normalized through this system's television programming. Our vices are being normalized through this television program. Here is a guy named William Macy. He's an actor. He's a star of a show called Shameless. He says, there is wonderful educational stuff on video. Our issue is that television itself is too powerful. That image is too overwhelming for a little kid. I think the longer we let their minds cook, the better, mm -hmm. all right? Because they're not watching television. It says celebrities who don't won't let their uh, kids watch their work, no matter how much they love the film or TV show they made, 
Endless celebrities have gone on record in interviews or talk show appearances as refusing to let their children watch their work. Things might change when the kids get older, but for now, these celebrities' children have no idea why they're famous, and if celebrities have anything to say about it, it's going to stay that way. All right? So a lot of celebrities, they don't like let their children watch television. Okay? Mm. This, this was a guy from the show um, Breaking Bad. And he said he didn't let his children watch uh, television because of the violence. Okay. He said that uh, he, he didn't want to expose his kids to such violence and drug filled environment in his, from his show Breaking Bad. Michael Jackson, show, same thing though. Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson, he didn't let his kids watch TV either. He, wow, and he would keep veils over their face when they come in public. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. I remember that. But he didn't. But when they was home, they they were not allowed to watch TV. That that gave birth to the farm and the uh, all the animals and all that other stuff, teaching them all that stuff. Right. Yeah. But see, the, the thing is, is that people don't realize how powerful a media television is. Yeah. Very powerful. Very powerful in terms of controlling your perception. Yeah. Okay? Now here's the thing. Just as bad as that government. Oh yeah, but see, but that's that's what <laughs> that's what. Don't get, well, doing that. Don't get you started on that. I know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but this the, the woman who who did the voices for the Frozen characters. She don't need, she doesn't even let her children watch television. Wow. So, so it's it's very interesting. Now here you have Madonna. She mm -hmm. made the comment that TV is trash, and she doesn't allow her uh, children to watch it. Now, here's a very interesting article from uh, 2002. This is very interesting. Mm -hmm. The prime minister of the, well, the, the old prime minister of Israel, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, he said the U.S. should attack Iran with TV. It says a former Israeli prime minister Thursday called upon the United States to effect re regime change in both Iraq and Iran prescribing a military invasion to topple the government in Baghdad and the mm -hmm. transmission of reball television programming via satellite, where he said the influx of pop culture would prove subversive to the uh, conservative Islamic regi uh, regime. Citing the hundreds of thousands of satellite television dishes in Iran, Netanyahu told the House Government Reform Committee that the United States could incite a revolution against the conservative Iranian clergy through the use of such Fox broadcasting staples as Melrose Place and Beverly Hills 90210, both of which feature beautiful young people in various states of dress, of undress, living glamorous materialistic lives and engaging in promiscuous sex. This is pretty subversive stuff, Netanyahu told the committee. The kids of Iran would want the nice clothes they see on those shows. They would want the swimming pools and fancy lifestyles. So they yeah. talk, he talked about using television, you know, and its programming as a weapon to change the lifestyle of Iranian people to mm. get them to revolt against their conservative values. Mm -hmm. Okay, this stuff is this stuff is very deep. It's very heavy. All right. So when they talk about the word subversive, and then Intending or intending to subvert or overthrow, destroy or undermine an established or existing system. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to, they wanted to destroy, you know, their uh, conservative values, you know, being led by, you know, Islamic beliefs. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's you know, very powerful. And then here I, I put the the, the, ten, the ten commandments, right? Because everything that this system pushes goes against these completely opposite, completely opposite. opposite, right? Completely opposite, all right. So here we go. One one of the, the one of the commandments is don't covet, don't desire what belongs to another, all right. But this system pushes that all the time, pushing the materialism. Pushing uh, yeah. the beautiful women, and all this stuff, right? You know, so they want you to covet other people's possessions, right? 
Now, what show is this, Doc B? I know you know this show. What show is oh, this? Oh, come on. What's this one called? Way back. Now you're telling my age. <laughs> this, this show is called what? Scandal. Right? Oh, yeah. So in this show, the heroine is an adulteress. Uh -huh. Okay? And she was... See what you're saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, no Scandal is a new show. No Scandal is new. That's not back when my day... No, no, no. no. That's, that's recent. That's yeah. recent. My, that's this is recent. recent. But if you if you look at it, the, the heroine of the story mm -hmm. is an adulterer. Okay? Yes. Yes. So they're helping to push that idea of adultery and making it seem like it's okay. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. And uh, adultery, as we know, is a voluntary uh, sexual intercourse between a married person and the person who's not right. his or her spouse. But here's the scandal storyline. It says, uh, like she was working with the president. Uh, they continued their relationship. Mm -hmm. you know, they, you know, he was married, you know, but she was messing around. Right, with him, right? right. right. Yeah. But everybody was flocking to watch this show. Uh -huh. you know, yes, I, they were. They couldn't uh, wait. They couldn't right. wait. Right? Damn. TV. Here we go. This is a um, this is, was a website that they came up with. It was called Ashley Madison. Uh -huh. All right. The description of Ashley Madison it says uh, it was a ca Canadian online dating service and social networking service marketed to people who are married. Who are in relationships? It was founded in 2002 uh, with the slogan "Life is short, have an affair." So this was a website that was pushing people to go out and have an affair, to have affairs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. getting them to meet up and everything. Wow. And it was in different languages. Wow! Swedish, Turkish, Ukrainian, Russian, Japanese, Italian, Ukrainian, Hindu, Hebrew. Greek, German, French, Korean, Slavian, Spanish, European, American, French, Finnish, 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 Filipino, yep. English, Dutch, Danish. Man, that's a lot. So it was being pushed all over the world to, for people to have affairs. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So now look at this. So the Bible tells you, it says, thou shalt not commit adultery. <laughs> the Quran tells us, nor come nigh to adultery, for it is a shameful deed and an evil opening the road to other evils. Mm -hmm. okay? Because of other stuff that can come about because of Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and the, yeah. Thing, the thing is, is that when you look at adultery, it, it destroys a family. Of course. Right? And then it could cause the children to, 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 to maybe uh, have problems in their lives, you know. Oh, so it's definitely other evils. Okay, it spirals down. It's a downhill spiral all the way around. All the way around. woman gets pregnant and yeah. all kinds of stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Takes the takes the the man or the woman out of the home, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So it's very very interesting. Look at and then most of the time in the hood, somebody going, one of them going to jail when they get caught, and the other one, one going to jail because they done did something to the, another one going to the hospital. Right. So everybody out the kid's life, everybody going. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Now, this is this very interesting. All right. This is Ted Bundy. All right. Yeah, yeah. Ted Bundy was an American serial killer who kidnapped, raped, Eight. Murdered numerous young women and girls during the 1970s yes, and possibly is. earlier. After more than a decade of denials, he confessed to 30 murders yeah. committed in seven states between 1974 and 1978. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But now, watch this, sister. Because the today. Going. They interviewed him before he was to be executed. All right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But he wanted to give advice to the American public and whoever, all right? But here we go. Watch this because this gives me, all right? Mm -hmm. It says, uh, these are excerpts from the Ted Bundy, Bundy interview, 1989. This was 1989, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. It says, well, let's go, go back then to those roots. 
first of all, you, as I understand it, were as I understand it, were raised in what you consider to be a healthy home. This is the interviewer. I put the interviewer in blue. All right. Okay. Uh huh. And he said, absolutely. Right. He said, you were not physically abused. You were not sexually abused. You were not emotionally abused. He, Ted Bundy said, no, in no way. And that that's part of the tragedy of this whole situation because I grew up in a wonderful home, dedicated and loving parents as one of five brothers and sisters. At home where we as children were the focus of my parents' lives. We regularly attended church, two Christian parents. They did not drink, they did not smoke. There was no gambling. There was no physical abuse or fighting in the home. I'm not saying this was leave it to Beaver, that's an old television show. Uh -huh. <laughs> he, he said one, the, the interviewer said one perfect home. No, I don't believe that such a home exists, but it was a fine, solid Christian home and nobody, I hope, will try to take the easy way out and try to blame or otherwise accuse my family of contributing to this because I know and I'm trying to tell you as honestly mm -hmm. as I know how what happened. So he's trying to tell him what happened to him. Now watch this. This is, oh my goodness. He says, and I think this is a message that we can get across. But as a young boy, and I mean a boy of 12 or 13, certainly, I encountered outside the home again in the local grocery store and the local drug stores, the soft core pornography or what people call soft core, as I think, as I, I've explained to you last night, that this antidote that as young boys, we explore the back doors and the sideways and the byways of their neighborhoods. And oftentimes the people would dump the garbage and whatever they're cleaning out of their house. And from time to time, we would come across pornographic books of a harder nature than a, than a more graphic, you might say, a more explicit nature of what we would encounter. Let's say in your local, uh, what you would encounter in your local grocery store. And this also included such things as, let's say, detective magazines. Those included violence. Yes, and this is something that I want to emphasize. This is the most damaging kinds of pornography. And again, I'm talking from personal experience, he said. Hard, real, personal experience of the most damaging kinds of pornography are those that involve violence and sexual violence. Mm. The wedding of those two forces, as I know only, only too well, brings about behavior that is just, just too terrible to describe. All right? Oh, yeah. Now, he said Detective Magazine. So what I did was I looked up these magazines that were going on around in his time. So this is what he was talking about. This is what he was running to as a child. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So that first one was Danger 10,000 Volts of Sex Appeal. This wow. one is Teen Tetris. She had the experience of an older woman, the morals of a she wolf, and a whole high, high school for her wanton uh, playground. So if you look at it, the stuff that he was consuming, and this is what I see it. I see it. About, it's about the violence, all right, and the things that our children are consuming, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at it, it's all sex and violence. This is what and he, he went there in his mindset. He absorbed. They, right. they, they televised him. They, it was crazy. Oh my goodness. This was a man who killed 30 people, mm -hmm. including a 12 year old girl. Mm -hmm. But look at look at the look at the look at the magazine. Look at the man and the woman name in his yeah, right. Yeah. So I talk about how important it is in terms of what we consume. But look mm -hmm. at this one. I didn't know this stuff was this bad back yeah. then. Yeah. But look, he cut, he cut the woman's head off. A whole axe, yeah. right? Yeah, look at this. All of this stuff was cutting people's heads off and stuff. But this is what he was consuming. Wow. Now, at that, he, age, that at, age. That, at that age, so what is this stuff doing to the minds of our youth and the minds of our children? Mm -hmm. Right? Because you see what it did to him. But now yeah. watch. Now watch what he says here. He says, these barriers I've been, that I had learned as a child, that I had been instilled in me, 
were not enough to hold me back with respect to seeking out and harming somebody. So he's talking about the, his Christian value that his parents instilled in him. He said these barriers couldn't stop him. Another fact here I haven't mentioned is the use of alcohol. And this is what the Quran warns us about, the use of alcohol. What I think it, what alcohol did in conjunction, because it was the alcohol and the pornography, let's say with my exposure to pornography, alcohol did reduce my inhibitions at the same time as the fantasy life that was fueled with pornography. It wrote it further. Those of us who are so much influenced by violence in the media, in particular, pornographic uh, violence, are not some kinds of inherent monsters. We are your sons, we are your husbands, and we grew mm. up in good families. And pornography can reach in and snatch a child out of any house today. Now, when we go back to these phones, remember, your child has access to any and everything with these mm -hmm. phones. The tree of knowledge. Okay, this is what these people were trying to make, the little tree of knowledge. He said, it snatched me out of my home 30 years ago. And as diligent as my parents were, they were very, they were diligent in protecting their children. And as good of a Christian home as we had, and we had a wonderful Christian home, there was no protection against the kinds of influences that are loose in the society that tolerates all right, but now, I mean, you have to think about it. And this is what I talked, told you about, vampires. We are inviting these things into the world. They're not forcing us to get this stuff. We're bringing it in. We're bringing it in ourselves. Yeah. He said, listen, yep. I'm no social scientist and I haven't done a survey. I mean, I don't pretend that I know what John Q citizens think about this. But I've mm -hmm. been in prison for a long time now, and I've met a lot of men who were motivated to commit violence, just like me. And without exception, every one of them was deeply involved in pornography. Without question, without exception, deeply influenced and consumed by an addiction to pornography. There's no question about it. The FBI's own study on serial homicide shows that the most common interest among serial killers is pornography. Oh my goodness. But yet this is being normalized in society. Yeah. Right? Pretty much. Yep, you got Vince in there. He's saying that Satan's whispers. Satan yeah. said he would incite false desires in the people. Then you mm. have uh Karen up here saying tell T E L lie. L-I-E. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And then um, Vince also said that um, he was willing to, uh, back when you showed the, the, the kids, that they were willing to kill their own parents. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but that's how powerful these addictions are. But let me see if I can get some more of this, what Ted Bundy said, because I think it's very important what he said. He says right. now, we got like two minutes. All right. We got we got 12 minutes or two minutes, you said. Two minutes because two minutes. I have to get off that. Oh, that's, right. that's right. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let's let's go over this uh last one and then I guess we can pick it up um next time. All right. Okay. He says, mm -hmm. What I'm saying now that there are loose in their towns and their communities, people like me today, whose dangerous impulses are being fueled day in and day out by violence in the media in its various forms, particularly the sexualized violence. And what scares me, and let's come into the present now, because what I'm talking about happened 30, uh, 20 or 30 years ago, that is in my formative stages. And what scares me, Dr. Dobson, is when I see what's on cable TV, some of the movies, I mean, some of the violence in the movies that come into homes today with stuff mm -hmm. that they wouldn't show in X-rated adult theaters 30 years ago. This stuff, he, the interviewer said, is that slasher movies you're talking about? He said, that stuff is, I'm telling you from personal experience, the most graphic violence on screen, particularly as it gets into the home to children when they'll be unattended or unaware that they need to be a Bundy who has that vulnerability 
that predisposition to be influenced by that kind of behavior. Yeah, yeah. So I guess we can, we can stop there, I guess, and, and come back because, you know, I want to finish finish uh, what's going on here. But yeah, sure. we can finish. We'll All be right. back on the 23rd, everybody. All right. We'll be back on the 23rd and we'll be have our final session. That's our fourth session before going on to WURD radio, which is the last Sunday of the month at 2 p.m. You will be listening to Brother Rashid. And that topic on the radio is going to be what? Um, gun violence, violence. Community violence. Yeah, gun violence in the black community. Gun violence in the black community. All right. So there it is. He talked about Ted Bundy. Y'all better watch them behaviors. And I really like the part where it says leaving the children, you know, at home, you know, mm -hmm. unattended. Like the oldest one watching the middle one and the middle one watching the baby one. Mm. And then the the thinking shifts and mm. then the accidents begin to happen. Mm. See, Ted mm. Bundy said he told it right there in that paragraph. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it right here on Bring It to the Table with your host, author, Doc B. You heard Brother Rashid. Please join us again on next uh, Tuesday. Uh, no, two Tuesdays, the 23rd. We'll be back on the 23rd. Doc, be going away for a couple of days, okay? <laughs> be back on the I am. I'm going on my spiritual yeah. retreat. And so we'll be, I'll be back on the 23rd, and we'll do part four, and then we'll see you on the radio the last Sunday of this month with Brother Rashid at 2 p.m. That's WURG 96.1 FM and 980M Radio. Peace. Thank you, brother. Good information. <laughs> <I'm good. laughs>